Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto and breaking down to bite-sized pieces today. Just as the thumbnail states very clearly, USDC is under investigation from the SEC. A lot of acronyms, but uh, in all honesty, it just equals potentially a little pushback. And uh, we'll take a look at exactly what's going on. But uh, we'll take a look at the USDC versus SEC. Uh, we're going to take a look at a little deeper dive as far as like Gary Gensler, who is the head of the SEC, and how he views stable coins and why uh, these will be a, um, a problem if it is actually deemed as a security. And lastly, we're going to talk about fighting back, where uh, individuals are talking, are fighting back to the IRS and saying, hey, all the information you guys keep taking from me, from all these exchanges, you can't do that because it's against my constitutional rights. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, take a look at what's going on into the market. So today, that's yeah, a pretty good day. I mean, uh, it's uh, Friday. Can't beat that. Weekend's almost here, and we're at uh, $2.28 trillion. Now, We've dropped a little bit, and I've seen it go up to like 2.36, 2.37. So in all honesty, we are down. And the sentiment today is a little bearish, if not neutral, and which is kind of odd because like the price has gone up so much, you would think that uh, people like so it would be so uh, happy and they'd be so uh, you know FOMO like it's going to go on forever. But thankfully, we are a group of smart people. And we realize that things can't go up forever. And that's why I think that uh, as things go up, we are all expecting a little bit of a pullback, which we're seeing right now, maybe uh, throughout the weekend. Uh, but we will see. Anyhow, that is the sentiment from uh, Trade the Chain. You want to take a look at uh, sentiment analysis links in the description. Uh, as far as coins, there's really not much as far as like action going on like there. I mean, one hour change, everything's down across the board. 24 hours. Solana is up 2%, but it's been kind of lagging. Eh, it's been okay this week, 5 or 6%. But yeah, everything's just kind of just moseying along. Not a big deal. Filecoin up 7%, but you know, it it is what it is. So that's what's going on in the market. Let's take a look at what's going on as a, like a deeper sense. And uh, we're going to go over market data. And we just uh, implemented this last two days. Seems to be uh, do pretty well. And what we try to do is take a look at on-chain analysis and things that are going on within the market. So the first thing we always like to take a look at is who's getting liquidated, right? All of the uh, different traders out there and nothing against traders. Good for you guys. Hopefully this is only a very small percentage of your portfolio that you're uh, leveraged trading with, like 1% or 2%. But hey, I'm not here to tell you what to do. You're an adult. So uh, we've got, uh, as far as liquidations, the single, let me see, I'm going to blow this up, the single largest... Uh, liquidation happened on BitMEX for 1.57 million. It's not a bad day, right? It's not billions. It's okay. In the last 24 hours, uh, as, far, as far as liquidation, people getting wrecked, 135 million. And then we take a look at uh, the Bitcoin futures market. We can see which way the wind is a blowing as uh, we've got uh, what are the longs, what are the shorts. And you can see as far as like longs, OKX, Binance, and those things, we're seeing like uh, there's... A little bit of a sideways action, maybe even more prone to a little bit of the shorts. And that's what we have on as far as the futures market. Now, if you take a look at a little on-chain analysis, take a look at all miners' outflows. We know that as miners start to sell, and they have a pretty good amount of Bitcoin, price usually starts to go down a little bit. And we can see this here. Let me blow this up and bring this up here. And we can see that, yeah, uh, we've got uh, a little bit of uh, miners uh, selling a little bit more. And what do we have? We had a peak. And a little bit of a drop down. So the miners keep uh, selling. I would definitely keep a look on that because that usually means that the price uh, will usually go down. Also, as far as exchange reserves, as people start to uh, sell off their uh, crypto, what do they have to do? They have to put it onto uh, these exchanges. So we'll see the price. This is for Bitcoin. The price will go up. But as we uh, start to see things, it'll start to uh, accumulate in the exchanges. So just make sure that if you see a uh, uh, exchanges starting to have a lot of reserves uh, on there. That means that people are probably going to sell. And the same thing with Ethereum. You can see on the top left-hand corner here, uh, we had a lot of people that uh, are as far as exchanges. They had a lot. And of course, over here, not too much. And that means that uh, people were taking it off, but now it looks like they're coming right back and putting it right back on the exchanges to sell. So what does that mean? Well, exactly what happened today. A little bit of a, a downward uh, price action. And then I always like to take a look at the correlation between what's going on with uh, our market and then, of course, all the uh, traditional markets. So just so you know, everything's down. S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow, Russell 30, US dollar index. Bitcoin index is up a little bit. Hey, look at that. So uh, as far as correlation, eh, eh, not so much. Maybe a little bit, but that's what we got. And then uh, lastly, just so we see uh, a little bit of charts. I'm not a chart person, so I was going to this very quickly. And uh, what we can see right here is that this down here is the RSI. 
It's a relative strength index. When this goes up, it means that uh, things are overbought. This is for Bitcoin. And uh, when we go above 70, this is for my parameters, it tells me that things are pretty much overbought. And we can kind of see that if we're looking at this, what happened here, as we start to go up, things were just being just overbought and overbought. And at some point, people got to sell. And that's what they did when it went above 70. Bam. Then we take a look back. It's the same type of thing once we go above those parameters. So here we are again. And uh, there's a big peak and then a sell-off. We go up again and a peak and a sell-off and so on and so forth. So today, uh, it makes a lot of sense that people were selling just a little bit. But here's a nice little marker, which is a little bit of green and not a lot of space. So it means a little indecision. And then finally, I just want to make this uh, make mention. So we see like, oh, no, people are selling off. It's going to be awful. It's not the bad news, really. You'd have to zoom out and take a look at the time frame. So this is from uh, Will Clemente, analyst. He usually works with Pomp, I believe. And he says, look, this is great news. Uh, there, we have an all-time high of 85% of Bitcoin supply hasn't moved in at least three months. So what does that mean? That means that a lot of people are holding on to their Bitcoin because they believe, I believe, and maybe you believe, that Q4 is going to be fireworks. So that's what we have as far as the market goes. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes. USDC versus the SEC. Getting into it. Uh, issuer Circle cooperates with the SEC after receiving investigative subpoena. So here's what is going on. Uh, USDC issuer Circle has a slow thunder investigation by the SEC. This is no surprise. Uh, looks like Gary Gensler is out for stable coins. We'll go on that in a second. The company says it's fully cooperating with the commission regarding the investigation. What's the, what's the alternative? I have no idea. Uh, Circle had crossed paths with the SEC after it was fined 10 million for infringements of its uh, of subsidiary, the Polonian X. And it says, uh, circle the issue of stablecoin USDC is coming under investigation because of, uh, which was funny because investigation by the SEC, according to the regulatory filings that it's submitted to the regulator. So of course they have to file with the SEC everything that they're doing. And because they are a publicly traded company as far as circle. And they said, hey, you're investigating us just so you guys know. And the company stated in its October S4 filing in July, 2021, we received an investigative subpoena from the SEC Enforcement Division requesting documents and information regarding certain of our holdings, customer programs, and operations. And then it just kind of gets into uh, the little nitty gritty, but this is the crux of it right here. For Gary Gensler, stable coins are securities and they fall within the ambit of the SEC. And the question you might want to ask yourself is, why is that? Why does Gary think that? We'll get to that in a second. But first, I just want to show you this. The thing with Circle, I don't understand why they're saying, well, you know, we want to see everything else. Because in actuality, Circle, uh, they have been audited. And they've been audited by some pretty big companies. And they have been proven that as far as like the audit goes, they have enough to actually back everything. So that's the first thing. So that's a good part. Uh, you might see some other things about Tether out there, which may or may not be good. I don't want to get into that. I just don't use Tether. I just use USDC. That's just my personal choice. And when we take a look at this, well, why would the SEC start to crack down on Circle? Well, it's because, unfortunately, uh, Circle is very open. And what they try to do is they try to say, look, we have nothing to hide. Here's everything. And the SEC loves that because Coinbase did the exact same thing and said, hey, we'll meet with you and we'll sit down with you. And they said, thanks so much. Here's your Wells notice. Uh, we're going to sue the pants off you if you try to do any kind of earn or any type of yield type of programs. So don't even think about it. So for all you Coinbase uh, users, you could have actually gained a bunch of yield on a plethora of your, of your cryptocurrencies. Uh, but the SEC, which works for you, says you can't have anything. Essentially, that is what happened. So the question then becomes, why is Gary so mad or so up in arms about stable coins? And I kind of see his point. Or actually, I see where he is, but I don't really see why he is. So what I'm going to do is uh, we had actually covered this. There was a uh, Senate hearing committee and it was uh, Senator Toomey asked him and drilled him on some questions. Just this three minutes out of this hour plus long video is really all you need to know. So just take a listen. So some are and some aren't is basically what you're saying. And I'm concerned that the SEC has not provided sufficient definition for, uh, and, and explained how it would apply the Howey test, which I think is the uh, court standard for determining when something is an investment contract. So, for instance, stable coins do not have an inherent expectation of profit. 
They're just linked to the dollar. Now, you might use them in an attempt to make a profit, but that's a, that's a second-order activity. Is it your view that stable coins themselves can be securities? Um, I think, it's, uh, Senator, they may well be securities. Um, as as uh, Thurgood Marshall wrote in the Reeves opinion, um, in uh, defining the scope of the market that it, Congress, wished to uh, regulate, Congress painted a broad brush, and it actually included about 35 different things inside the definition of a security in okay. the 33 I, Act. I, I've just got limited time here, so I acknowledge that. Um, here's my problem, though. I think what you just said was that they may be securities or that some are securities. Um, to me, a stablecoin doesn't meet the second prong of the Howey test, that there has to be an expectation of profits from the investment. And so if it doesn't meet the Howey test, it looks to me like it's not a security. Now, maybe you've got a good argument for why some are and some aren't. My whole point is, I think we need to have clarity on this. I think you should publicly disclose this. Apparently, there are private conversations where you work with people who are proposing particular structures and you give them advice, or your staff gives them advice. I just think we ought to have that publicly. And we certainly shouldn't be taking enforcement action against somebody without having first provided that clarity. Well, um, Senator, this this Congress and uh, could change the laws, but the laws that we have right now have a very broad definition of security, including a note, including an investment contract and the like. And our, my predecessor, uh, Chair Clayton and others actually put out a lot of guidance with regard to the Howey. I, I just I just got to push back a little bit on that. It, it is broad, but it's well defined. There is a very specific litany of the instruments that constitute securities, as you know this better than I do. Investment contract is one of them. And there is a court decision that lays out the prongs for what constitutes an investment contract. I'm just saying, as a layman who can read English, when I read those tests, stable coins don't seem to meet that test to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but if I can misinterpret this, I think others could too, and some clarity, public clarity, I think would be helpful. Um, I see the red light, but I agree with you that, that um, uh, some of these tokens have been deemed to be commodities. Many of them are securities, and the Supreme Court has weighed in a number of times. You, you noted the Howey test. I, we've talked about the Reeves test was in the 1990s as well, um, has weighed in, and I think that there's a fair amount of clarity over the years. So there's some very funny things about Gensler and his responses. First of all, I don't think you really ever answered the question. You said it's very broad. And then uh, he talks about how, you know what, they are still... A, a security and i'm pretty well set on that even to me makes it crystal clear he's like well why is it that you haven't given us clarity but behind closed doors you're slapping everybody with uh, legislation and going hey if you do anything we're going to sue you but we're not going to tell you exactly what it is the things that he's talking about just does not jive and does not make sense it is up to you to determine what that is and i would love to hear your comments in the comment section as to why what's going on but what it really all comes down to is this circle is going to cooperate uh, they're going to help. To, they're going to help with, with the SEC to determine whatever it is, and hopefully they can help them flesh it out. Does this mean that USDC and everything's going to going to crumble and everything else? No, it just means they're under investigation. It just means that they're they're peering into stablecoins, which we knew was going to happen because that is where Gens was going. And even Jerome Powell, uh, for the head of the central banks, is like, hey, you know what? Uh, these stablecoins, we got to regulate them. So there is a big thing about just stable coins. And it seems to me like crypto, at least some of them are gonna get a pass like Bitcoin, Ethereum. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. And uh, let's go on to our last piece, which is about fighting back. I think this is like a, it's a, how people really want to really fight back to their governments. And uh, there's one guy doing it. Not all heroes wear capes. This is a crypto user asks the first circuit to curtail IRS collection of records. And uh, what's going on here is you're going to love this. So in 2017, the IRS won a ruling that granted the government access to transaction records belonging to more than 10,000 customers of Coinbase Inc. Last April, the government obtained a similar ruling to see records from Circle. 
And who and what is Circle? Well, they're the ones we just talked about with USDC. Anyhow, kind of funny. IRS is, but it says here, this actually, even though they did get all this information, it actually confirmed the IRS's suspicion, which was that uh, Coinbase customers were not paying their fair share of taxes, and they actually collected another $25 million. And that's why uh, here in the States, uh, President Joe Biden is really beefing up the IRS because he wants all that money because he wants to print as much as he possibly can and tax the tar out of everybody. And uh, that's where we're at. So uh, when we get to, when we talk about taxes, it's important because if you want to get it, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. And if you get taxed up to oblivion, it doesn't make sense. Anyhow, to finish this up, James Harper contends that the IRS, this is the guy, James Harper, remember this guy. James Harper contends that the IRS violated his constitutional rights when it obtained records of his transaction. Uh, and this is what it all comes down to. The question will come down to an interpretation of the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling last May in CIC services versus the IRS. Harper contends that the Supreme Court's ruling clears the way from a challenge what he considers an unconstitutional seizure of his records. Seizure of his records. And then it goes into a bunch of uh, legal mumbo jumbo. And uh, you can read that, and I will link that in the description. But really, what it all comes down to is this. If you don't like the way that the government's treating you, you need to fight back. You need to do the things that you need to do within legal parameters to make sure that you get what's coming to you. And you, because you've done a lot of hard work, so why not? Which leads me to my last point, which is this. We did a video not too, not too long ago, and it's a tax-free crypto IRA at iTrust. And uh, if you don't like paying taxes, I have a crypto IRA. And what's great about that, I did a video and it goes over a traditional IRA, SEP IRA, Roth IRA, which is the one that I have, which means that everything that you put into this Roth IRA, you pay 0% in taxes, zero, 0.0. 0. So if you put Bitcoin when it was at $5,000 and uh, you just let it appreciate, then you took it out when it was uh, 50,000 or 60,000 or maybe 250,000, whenever it is, and you take it out, you pay zero in taxes. Zero. This is how Peter Thiel made a five billion dollars was with a Roth IRA. He put all of his uh, stocks that he got from PayPal when it first came because uh, he was one of the founders. He let it appreciate massively. Then he took it out, paid zero taxes and it's legal. And that is the things uh, that we all need to do uh, if we want to get ahead in the game again legally. And that's exactly what I do. So if you want to take a look at I trust crypto IRA. Uh, there's a link in the description in all the links in all my videos even this video right here to scroll down it'll say uh, i trust crypto ira the video we just talked about is right there and you get one month free with this link also check out uh, uh masterworks if you're looking into a different asset class to be uncorrelated as far as fine art multi-million dollar pieces in uh whatever you want to do anyhow so that is what is going on today and uh, that is it for everything so look if you uh, made it all the way to the end first of all i want to say thank you i appreciate it if you like these types of videos go ahead and give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing uh, the things we are uh, uh talk about are uh every day and they are time sensitive so go ahead and uh check it out subscribe and i'll see you on the next one